Hey everybody, this is me, the Undead Viking, and these are the four different eras of Einstein. And why is that important? Well, in the game Einstein, each person is going to be playing Einstein at this stage of his life. And they're going to be playing that along with some inspiration cards they have of ideas that he had during that period of his life, and then combining that with a bunch of these cardboard tiles uh, that are his ideas, uh, and you're going to be creating this, like, well, kind of a, a shape or a board, which is like his big idea, Einstein's big idea. And by combining all of those things together, um, you are going to succeed at different uh, tasks that are laid out before you, e either tasks that are just yours, your own, or tasks that are communally, uh, communally owned. And uh, the person who does the best job of that, of, of, of learning those things, or, or completing those tasks uh, will get the most victory points and then we'll win. However, because of the fact that you're all making this big idea in the middle, you are, you are going to be using other people's ideas and when you use other people's ideas, you are actually going to give them victory points for doing so. So let me show you, that's a lot to take in, so let me show you exactly how the game's played and then we'll come back here and we'll talk a little bit more about Einstein, the game, not the dude, but we can talk about the dude too. All right, so this is Einstein, and I have set up the game the way it should look, uh, basically because of the fact that each person is going to have this big giant pile of these tiles. Uh, the tiles are all these different shapes, and they represent different types of ideas that Einstein had. And also, it is always going to be set up in this order. This would be the first player because this person is going to be playing young Einstein. Uh, then we have prime Einstein, and then we have globetrotting Einstein, and then we have wise Einstein. You can even see, I'll show you the pictures here really quick, uh, you can even see that, like, you know, here's uh, the young Einstein, and whenever I think young Einstein, I'm young Frankenstein, Frankenstein, Frank okay, anyway, uh, and then here we have prime Einstein, Einstein, globetrotting Einstein, and then wise Einstein. And of course, this one of the things that I mentioned, this is kind of almost a very educational game as well, as far as just factoids and things like that. On the back of these, like it has each thing. So the young Einstein was a rebel and original thinker. Albert Einstein sparred with authority and couldn't get a job in academia after graduating from Zurich Polytechnic. Undeterred, he worked in the Swiss patent office where access to applied ideas and ample free time enabled him in 1905 to enjoy an Annus Mirabilis or Miracle Year, publishing four groundbreaking papers, including his special theory of relativity. And so, and then each one of these has that exact same thing. So here's Prime, Einstein, Globetrotting, and Wise. And so, you know, and it, it's kind of cool that it represents the, like, different eras of his life. And, you know, and so, like, in each person is going to get the different colored tiles that represents that thing and also they get a deck of these inspiration cards. Now inspiration cards are going to actually have like the picture of the design that you're going to be wanting to create with those tiles uh, and then it has like little things on the bottom as well. So here it says chemistry axiom it's going to be worth five points and then uh, Michelle Besso, one of Einstein's oldest and best friends, Besso made Einstein at Zurich Polytechnic and would consult on Einstein's theories over their lives. And so, you know, it's just like cool things like that. And yeah, I mean, after you've read them once, you probably are going to, uh, you know, know them or whatever. But I really like the fact that, you know, this is uh, an educational game as well. So, uh, the game is relatively uh, simple. Uh, basically, each person gets three of these cards. Let's say I'm playing Prime Einstein. So you start with a hand of these three cards. And these are the different, like... Uh, designs that I want made out because basically what we're doing is we're making an Einstein massive idea like this and, and so each person is going to be placing tiles they place two tiles on each turn and they place them out there and then everybody else builds off of those tiles connecting them and then eventually like in the middle of the board I, I'm not gonna be able to show you but th th it's gonna get pretty massive right you know because of the fact that each person just me always adding two tiles on each turn now there's several different ways that you can 
uh, the, the game ends. Um, if somebody actually uh, gets through all, like, draws the last of their inspiration cards, if you get through the, the, like, the big idea cards, which I'll explain here in just a little bit, or if you run short of tiles. That signifies the game end. There's no turns, like, it doesn't last ten turns and it's over. The, you, the players kind of determine when the game ends. When it ends, everybody gets an equal number of turns. So, unless Wise Einstein is the person that you know, causes the game to end, like, you, everybody will get one more turn. So, if Prime Einstein caused the game to end, then Globetrotting Einstein and Wise Einstein would get one last turn, and then we total up our total points. All right, so, the bottom line is, is that each person is just gonna, gets free reign. They get to take two of their tiles, and they get to place them in the middle, and then everybody starts building that. To begin with, it's going to be empty, and um, Young Einstein's just going to take two tiles and place them into the middle and connect them. You can't have them separated. Whenever you place a tile out, it has to be connected to other tiles. Now, before I actually start connecting tiles and show you how that works, oh, and I should mention also, when you draw these three inspiration cards, you keep them secret because you don't want other people to know like what, what shapes you're going after because obviously then they can try to work against that and prevent you from scoring those shapes. So these are like the big idea things. Um, this is another way that you can score points. Whereas, however, these all have like a specific design that you have to go for. These kind of are like a separate goal. So like here's these like three that I'll just show you. So this says complete an inspiration, basically complete one of those cards. Complete an inspiration using both ideas you place this turn. So if you put both of them on there and both of them combine to connect something, you get these bonus points. Um, collect, complete two inspirations on your turn and bonus points. Uh, complete an inspiration with just one of your own ideas, meaning because each one of these tiles represents an idea. So if you completed one and you were using co-opting other people's tiles and just having one, you earn the point bonus points for those as well. And, and as you complete these, um, you will always like replace them. Take one off the deck. You know, if you, if you complete this, take one off the top, put it on the bottom, you know, straightforward like that. So you're always going to have um, like, you know, the, the people have access to a full amount when it comes to their turn. The same thing goes with your inspiration cards. Um, once you have done your turn and you've like turned in any inspiration cards and, and scored them, then you get to draw back up to a hand size of three. You should always have those three cards in your hand. Now, one last thing uh, before I actually like show you how you build the stuff together. There is a second way, uh, the, apart from the cards, that people can earn points. If somebody completes an inspiration card and they co-opt some of your ideas, the other people gain one victory point uh, for each uh, idea that is co-opted into that creation. And for those, uh, you just you use tokens, like these yellow cubes. You'll get uh, uh, like basically these little points, these 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 victory points for each one uh, that that you you know you your tiles are used for by somebody else for their inspiration. Now you take the tokens, you take these day, uh, the, these cubes, these extra victory points, only when in that situation, when somebody co-ops your tiles, um, you don't take them for the cards. Uh, the cards, you just you know turn them over, put them in your discard pile, to show that you've earned them, and at the end of the game, you'll total them up and add them, and then add whatever, whatever you've collected otherwise as well. So, all right, so let's just go here and let's just like look at uh, here we have uh, Young Einstein, and so here he has like a mathematics challenge, uh, phil philosophy application, and mathematics effect. So all three of these, like they have, they're, 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 three, they're three ideas that he has to put together for an inspiration. And so what the player could do then is they could just you know start those things off. And so what they what they'll do is, and remember these are hidden, so you know they're not going to be uh, out there for people to see. But if you take, like, say, two of these big tiles, you can see that those two big tiles are right there. And if they're, they're created in that, like here, I'll show you, like so. And you'll see how those lines match up and, and, and they work together. So you can see how that's worked. So he could place those two out there on the board like that and hope that when like somebody else comes around on their turn and you can't and, and I should mention this that if another player you know would happen like let's just here let's grab one of these tiles so I can actually show you so if another player happened to complete this design he doesn't get that uh, you have to be the person that actually completes the design so 
And I should mention also, like, if you're ever wondering, like, which, which side, like, on the back of the tile, not this side, but on the back of the tile, it actually, you know, shows you, like, what type of uh, tile it is. So there is no confusion as far as that is concerned. So, for example, if... Let me grab the right... Uh, there, oh, okay, so there we go. If somebody, for whatever reason, they actually placed a tile like so... Even though that matches my design that's right here, I can't turn that in for that. I would actually somehow, I mean, this wouldn't happen because other people are going to be adding tiles. To score it, I would actually have to be the person that completes the design like so to collect uh, the, the, you know, to turn this card in for the three points that it's worth. But anyway, so um, that you, after you place those two, then, you know, then the player goes to the next person. So what were the three that we grabbed? I have no idea if we can actually build anything. Probably not, you know, because of the fact that, you know, we just don't have uh, the same things. And this is actually, and I, I can only assume this was purposely done. I mean, because it is, you know, in my opinion, rather brilliant uh, as far as uh, just how, like, you kind of almost have to, and I don't have it out here, but I actually have a Lazy Susan that I'll play games like this on, where, like, being able to turn the uh, the design is actually very helpful, um, and and I don't, I mean and I possibly quite possibly you're not supposed to have that. I think I think this game is all about trying to make people kind of think um, you know like not just up you know north south east west you know think spatially as far as trying to determine like how to create something. And so like you know looking at these tiles, you know, like you'd sit there and you'd say, well this kind of stinks because I really can't you know build you know those two together like that. That, I mean, doesn't match up at all with what I have. And so this is one of those things, too, where <laughs> when you're playing the game, people are going to be going like this a lot. You know, unless you have that lazy Susan like I had that, that we that we sometimes play games like this on. Um, so just keep that in mind. And like, and this is one of the things that I like about those as far as because it causes that, that brain burn to happen. So uh, let's just go ahead and, like, you know, maybe we're shooting for this one. And so we're just going to try to build off of, you know, this particular setup um, and, you know, try to make it so eventually, you know, we can somehow, you know, create, you know, this one. Perhaps we, when we get back to our turn, uh, we, we would have that capability. So the only rule is, is that when you place a tile out, it has to match up to all of the... Uh, the spots that are on there. So going, you know, like this is completely valid because of the fact that those two lines match up. However, like I couldn't go like this because of the fact that there's that line that hits the end and there's nothing there to back it up. Same thing goes for over on this side. That wouldn't work either. But I could, as I said, go like that. So I, I've added that, like, part of that idea. And of course, you know, once again, now we're going spatially, so we got to think, okay, so now I can, like, either put that other one on the other side, or what I could do is I could grab this guy, and you can see, you know, there's the, the design you can see on the back there as well. So, and add that on, like, so now you don't have to put those two right next to each other. That 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 isn't a necessity. You could, you know, if you if you wanted to for whatever reason, uh, place it over here. You know, it, it, so that isn't something that you have to do. Uh, in, in you know, so just as long as they actually fit, they can be placed there, and they have to be touching another tile. So well, what ultimately is going to happen is, and I'm just gonna you know to skip ahead a little bit. Let's just you know, for example, at some point in the game, you know that. Is, is, is set up like that, and then it gets over to my turn again. And so I have like this particular design. So what I can do is I can take this tile, and since I know, like looking at the thing, you know, I, can, I gotta make it like this, and, I'm, and it'll be completely valid. What'll happen is, is I get to go ahead, and as soon as, when you place that, you can show the inspiration card that, that you've completed. So the, the physics thesis card will be completed. I would get those points, um, but I don't take them. Remember, I don't take them out, out, of the, out of the bowl. I take them, I put them, I put it face down on my my card there to show that I've completed that inspiration. But now, remember, because I co-opted uh, Wise Einstein's cards, he gets to take 
one of these and place it over there to show that he actually, I use part of his ideas. And then he gets a point for doing that. Um, and as you know, and, and there's, if you have a situation where you could have a situation where like maybe you used one tile of your own and three tiles of somebody else's, um, they'll get three points for that. So it, it makes for like a tough decision as far as that's concerned. Like, do I, do I give them those points um, now, or do I like you know just so I can get four or, or, or five or whatever the card may be worth, or do I you know like you know if you completed like this one, uh, but like you you had uh, three tiles that somebody of, of other people, do I give other people three points? Just to get five, you know, maybe a net of two. So I mean, there's there's decisions like that which make the game a lot of fun. But after you do that, as I said, you collect another card, and so you have the, you know, the philosophy argument, and you go ahead and you put that on there, and so now you have three cards in your hand, and it goes to the next person. As I said, the game will continue. People will build this. It's going to get huge, and it is. And trust me, as you probably could guess, as as this design gets larger and larger, um, it will become more and more complex and it will become more and more difficult to kind of like figure out how things, you know, connect and how they would work together, you know, and so forth. And like, as you keep expanding out and further, but the cool thing is, is that even though, you know, it looks like, oh my gosh, like, you know, this doesn't make any sense. You'll, you'll actually like have situations where, um, the tiles are so ingeniously made that like you can notice like it just slides right in there you know it, it reminds me of those um puzzles that you'll get that i am horrible at where they give you like seven pieces of cardboard and they say that makes a square go ahead and put them together and you have to kind of figure them out and i and i you know it's it's a fun little uh brain teaser as well you know as far as putting this stuff together too so um so there you go. That I mean, that's the entire game. You play until one of those uh, those things. You either one person draws their last inspiration card. You get through this deck of the big ideas, or people you know get to a point where they're they're running out of their tiles. When that happens, you uh, play one last turn. Whoever has the most points will then be like the best Einstein of the four different Einsteins, if you will. It's a lot of fun. Um, like I said. <laughs> There's nothing better than watching people sitting there going like this, you know, trying to figure out how to put their stuff together. And it is one of those games, too, where you can kind of intuitively kind of figure out maybe what somebody's going for, and you can put, like, your one of your idea tiles down in a perfect spot that will help yourself out and block them as well, which is always a fun thing. But let me talk all about that and more uh, in my final thoughts. When I was in my early 20s, uh, quite a while ago, um, I dated a girl in college, and she had a poster, and I thought it was just so cool. Um, she had a poster on her apartment wall, um, like this giant poster, the classic uh, picture of Albert Einstein with his tongue out, with the crazy hair, and like, bah, you know, going like that. And I thought, I mean, it was just, it was a really, really awesome picture, and it was one of those things that, like, you know, she, like, just was kind of an off-the-wall kind of character. And uh, I wonder how she's doing. She was a really nice lady. But, um, I, I, and that was one of those things where, like, that was, I mean, I'd read some of the stuff about Einstein. I'd gone through the kind of, like, the standard schooling of Einstein. But I never really dove really deep into what he did and what he said and what he was a part of. Um, until, like, I saw that poster and I, that, that kind of, like, was this different side of him uh, that I'd never known. And so then I, I picked up a biography or something of his and I actually read it. And I kind of read that this guy had, I mean, obviously he was a genius and he had all these ideas that were just so far beyond uh, what anybody else was thinking at that time. But um, he, uh, you know, he, 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 like, when they say one-of-a-kind type of person, obviously, you know, he really, truly was. And he really did lead a pretty fantastic life. And so I, I, when I read those, that book, and I think I read a couple other ones as well, um, you know, it was one of those things that kind of opened my eyes to what he had done. But also, I found it really cool that, like, you know, a lot of the stuff, like, I don't remember those books really vividly, but, I mean, all the little, like, like stats and things like that, and little factoids about them on each one of these cards, I mean, it was just one of those things where it kind of, you know, when, you, when you've read something or done something and you forget about it, but then you read something to remind yourself about it, it was kind of neat. It kind of opened up a door to, like, my old, like, 22, 23-year-old dude, you know, back in the day. So I kind of appreciated that about the game. Now, that probably won't do that same thing for you, but it's like, that's what games are, right? They're kind of like experiences, and they're like things about games that are going to be 
um, unique for each person that plays it. And so that was something unique that happened with me, uh, which, you know, I really appreciated about this game. Now, it helped out a lot that the game was just flat-out fun. I do like tile games, and I do like puzzle games, like literal puzzle games where you're putting together a puzzle. And this is what it kind of felt like. And, you know, I am, and I'll fully admit, I am the guy that hides the last piece of the jigsaw puzzle in his pocket. So in everybody's working together to put the puzzle together. Um, when I was six years old, I did that so I could put be the last person to put the puzzle piece in. And uh, when I was, like, 40 and doing one with the family <laughs> um, over Christmas uh, a few years back, I, uh, I did the exact same thing again. So, uh, yeah. And so I, I, there's nothing more satisfying for me than like when you have the big idea that comes out and then like you, you take, you know, your, your, your like little piece and you slide it in perfectly into that one spot where it's needed to be. And you're able to complete, you know, like a, a, a picture and like, not only are you completing it for yourself cause you get something out of it, but you know, you know, you block somebody, you know, you prevented somebody from turning in a, a card, you know, and, and it, it's, it's a just, it's, it's a very nice satisfying feeling when you kind of slide that, that piece into place. And I think that's what games like this are. I mean, for me, that's what, that's what fun for me. Yes. The competition is fun. Yes. I want to complete my inspirations faster than everybody else. I want to get more points. But it's like little signature moments like that about in games like this that are there are definitely on the lighter side. Um, you know, where I don't feel like I'm really all that competitive. I just want to have a few of those signature moments where I can kind of like be really pleased with myself over like being both lucky to have the opportunity to do that, but also like being able to, you know, just kind of uh, win or lose, I can look back at that point and say, oh, that was kind of cool. I did that. And that's kind of what this whole game is for me. It is, it is like I said, very easy to teach, very easy to learn. Um, it has, you know, uh, the fun, the fun aspect, like I said, of people, you know, going like this with their cards and like, and, and you'll find out like everybody does it, you know, <laughs> you know, until I brought out the lazy Susan and put it out, um, you know, everybody was sitting there and said, then they're just like, they're slowly turning uh, the, the, the lazy Susan around in the circle as they're like looking at their card and like glancing up and down, that sort of thing. Um, you know, and, and that's just, it makes for a very fun experience for everybody involved. Um, I, I think this was a game that like, I, you know, I, 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 I tried to play with my daughter, I think spatially at nine. I mean, it just didn't really click with her really well. When we played two players, it did, you know, she was able to catch on, but I think it was one of those things where, um, with more players and more people gumming up the works, it just wasn't as easy for her to catch on. And I think it's like one of those things where, yes, it has a very light rule set, but um, it definitely isn't super light. It isn't like a filler light. It is, it is like a light game that dips its toes into like that medium spot. And people that aren't really spatially apt, if you will, uh, you know, might be fine. You might be in a situation where you're getting frustrated with the game more than you're actually having fun. And that's never somewhere you want to be. But all that being said, my gaming group took to it like a duck takes to water. Um, we really enjoyed it. We really enjoyed the different cards. Um, you know, there was something really nice about the fact that like everybody was like, you know, they, they, they draw their card and they'd spend the first, you know, like, you know, 35, 40 seconds of the next person's turn, like in there. Oh, interesting. You know, and then they, and then they cover it up. And they say, hey, check this out. And then they read off what's going on. And and so when a game can both be fun, it can both be competitive and also kind of teach some things along the way. Hey, that's awesome. So there you go. That's Einstein. If you have any questions about it, go ahead, ask away. I'll try to answer those as best as I can. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to learn this game and walk along with this in this video with me. And uh, until next time, I am the Undead Viking, and I'm telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.